All right. Hi, uh, very good afternoon. Love me to introduce myself. My name is Shabir. I'm so happy to be out here. So, um, I'm basically from Chennai. That's my excuse for being hot. <laughs> Did I miss out on the word headed? Um, I was born in a small place called Tiruputur. Now, Tiruputur is at the north or court of Tamil Nadu. It's a, uh, that's my nani hall. That's where my grandmother is. Uh, every summer vacation, I love to go to Tirpatur just to see my grandmother. Not so my grandfather, quite a grumpy man. Yeah, so uh, it's a beautiful little town, Tirpatur. Green fields, trees filled with green mangoes, those mangoes being cut and put for dehydration by dehydrated people. Open street, open drain, but people love you with open arms. I love the sight and smell of Tirpatur. Now, there are plenty of things that a young man could do out there at that time. There was no TV at my grandmother's house. So what we would do is we kids would sit around and tell each other stories. One of my favorite stories was that of a man relieving himself underneath a tree on a dark night and a jinn, which is a ghost, comes and gives him one tight slap. Now, something about the idea of a man getting slapped while relieving himself, which evoked peals of laughter from all the children around. And I realized then, that I love telling people stories. I love making people laugh. And those games, those wonderful, wonderful games that you could play around in Tirpatur. We'd, we'd go around to these dried out lake beds, we'd play cricket out there, we'd swing around in the trees, we'd swim in the ponds. But my absolute favorite toy, my favorite game was the pinwheel. Now for all those of you who don't know the pinwheel, it's a very simple toy. It's a paper fan, you mount it on a stick and you run. Something like this. Yeah? And when you run, you don't run mute. You run, you make noise like this. Chaka, chak, chaka, chak, chaka, chak, and you run. <laughs> we could have said anything. We would have said, we. Right? A Western kid would probably have said, we. But we said, chaka, chak, chaka, chak, chaka, chak. Why did we say chaka, chak? Because every time a blade would go down, it'd go chak, 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 and run, right? Now, if this was of two colors, if a single color, we would say chak, 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 and run. If this is two colors, we would say chaka, chak, 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 and run. And it happened to be of four colors. We would say chak, 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 and run. Oh, I love the pinwheel. We'll come back to the pinwheel a little later. Um, from Chennai, I went to Bangalore to do my engineering. I did my engineering from the IIT Bangalore. Okay, IIT is Islamia Institute of Technology. Thank you. That's me. Okay, so um, while doing my engineering, I saw this course in multimedia. I was so fascinated with multimedia. There were these uh, power Macs, there's these uh, power PCs being introduced. So I thought I'm going to take a break from engineering, pursue a little bit of multimedia. So I walked across to this institute and I told them, I want to do this course. It's a one year diploma in multimedia and I want to do it free. They were appalled, they were amused, and they laughed at me. I said I want it free and I will work for it. So it is a barter. Uh, the guy managed to indulge me and he gave me a course free. Also the same time where I indulge a little bit in radio. Uh, I hosted international music shows for the whole India radio. Finally I completed my engineering, went back to Chennai and tried my hand at being a mechanical engineer. Six months down, I've decided no. This is not what I want to do. I wanted to pursue my passion. I wanted to host shows, I wanted to tell people stories, I wanted to conduct games, I wanted to design games, and that is what I wanted to do. When I said I'm going to do that, a lot of people, my friends, my parents, my well-wishers told me, Shabir, that is stupid. Because you don't want to do anything mainstream, you don't want to get into television, you don't want to get into movies, there is no professional FM radio at that time, right? So how will you make a career? What will you feed yourself? How do you sustain? How do you maintain your loved ones? I did not have any answer, but I only knew one thing, that I wanted to go pursue my passion. It's been 15 years now that I've been doing what I love doing. I've been thriving, and there are quite a few lessons that I've learned from it. And today, I'd like to share my lessons with you. Now, what I realize is life is like a pinwheel. And here are my lessons from the pinwheel. 
right? Number one, add to those colors. If you see something, if you're passionate about something, and if you really want to do something, don't worry about anything. Don't think whether you can utilize it or not, whether it be useful or not. Invest everything you've got. Invest your money, invest your passion, invest your time. You would not regret it. And don't worry. You will keep utilizing them time and time again. A number of people ask me, Shabir, you did your mechanical engineering. It's gone wasted. Right? How are you utilizing your mechanical engineering? Remember, if you're passionate about something, you will channelize all your skills, everything that you learned into your passion. My mechanical engineering did not go wasted. It helped me design. I've designed a bridge. I've designed a boat. I've got patents in both of them, and I use it for my team building activities. I've got many more patents that are pending, copyrights that are pending. So hey, in case you like something in your life, don't worry, don't think. Add on to these colors, and remember, more the colors, more beautiful your pinwheel would look. Number two, stick it all together. There are a number of people who've got talent, but they're not organized. I've seen a number of people failing because their skill, be it a single skill or a multiple skill, is not organized. Like an individual blade of a pinwheel makes no sense at all. Right? And if you have two, three pin, uh, pinwheel blades and you're putting them down upside down in the opposite direction, it'll never rotate. Make sure they're all facing in the same direction. Make sure that they work. Only when the wind comes would it work. Now, ladies and gentlemen, mount it up on a stick and put it up for the whole world to see. Now, this is the most important thing. There are a number of people out there who are talented, but they're scared to expose themselves to the world. Put it all on a stick, mount it up. Let the whole world see who you are. Expose your talent. If you don't put it up for the whole world to see, and if you're just shy and you're keeping it down, when the winds come, it'll never rotate. Now, sticking out your neck or putting it up on a stick and showing it up is not easy. It never is. It was not easy for me. So when I went back to Bangalore, I said, hey, I wanted to pursue my passion. I did not have a place to stay. I was too proud to go and ask my father. I had already finished all my crying during my engineering days. I did not want to ask him for money now. So I come back to Bangalore. I contact a college junior who I hardly knew, and he's staying with six other people. I told him I want to stay with you, and finally I managed to convince him. He managed to get me a place. Today he's my business partner. Now, I did not have good food to eat at that time. I did not know where to start my career. I walk across to this local club, and I told them, give me a job. They give me a job, 500 rupees a week, and I had to conduct housey-housey, and I hate conducting housey-housey. As a matter of fact, I used to call it lousy-lousy. <laughs> so every time I would pick up my number, right? Every time I would pick up a number, I was always disdainful about the game, but I remember that although I'm disdainful, I need to entertain people. That's my job. So when I pick up a number, if it said, one, two, I would say double digit number one, two, ek do, take do. If I see two, two, I'd say two, 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 two. If I say three, three, I'd say Gaya three, Savitri, 33. I would say what comes to my mind, people loved it. Right? It was my job to entertain people. But I'll tell you the real secret why I used to do housey housey for 500 rupees a week. Because that one day gave me a decent meal. It was a grand buffet, and I could eat what I wanted to eat. And that was my one great meal for the year, or for the week. Right? There, there was a time uh, when there would be no housey-housey. They would say, don't come, there is no housey-housey, very less people. I'd still go. I'd still go, conduct it free for five people, just because I got to eat that meal. The first time I auditioned for the All India Radio, they failed me during audition. The first time I hosted a big show, thousand people watching, uh, I goofed up. And the beauty pageant winner came up to me, she took the mic from my hand, and she said, my name is not this, my name is that, and she gave the mic back to me. It was really embarrassing. But no matter what, put your pinwheel up, hoist it up, let the whole world see who you are. You will not regret it. Now, next, run. Run. You're talented, you put it all on a stick, you hoist it up for the whole world to see. But you're sitting at home. There are a number of people who do that. The young people, they're talented people. They got massive talent out there, right? But they complain, nobody recognizes me. 
Nobody is giving me a break. Nobody is giving me an opportunity. Imagine you're stuck. You're stuck on an island. You're marooned, right? And uh, what would you do? You'd wait for somebody to come and rescue you. You'd spend a few days. But then what happens if nobody comes and rescues you? What you would do is this is what you would do. You would create opportunities for yourself. You would possibly go build shelter. You'd be a hunter. You'd be a gatherer. You'd forage things around. Right? You would heal yourself. You'd be your own doctor. You'd possibly entertain yourself. You'd get somebody as a pet animal, etc. Entertain yourself. It's inbuilt in you. So don't sit with your pinwheel. Run. Create those opportunities. Now let's talk about the race. When you run with a pinwheel in your hand, and when you're running with this, this is the colors that you've added onto your pinwheel. And you're running with this. You're not looking right. You're not looking left. You are not looking at the competition. You're just looking at your own pinwheel and you're running. And you want to run. And you want to run really fast because the faster you run, the more beautiful the kaleidoscope of colors is. The cornucopia of colors, the melange of colors is a lot more beautiful. And that's the only reason why you're running fast. And when you reach the end of the road, what you realize is it's not a race, it's just a run, and there is no finishing line. So what happens when you really are admiring the colors in your pinwheel? You're running with your own pinwheel. You reach the end of the road. What would you do? A kid never says, okay, I ran, it was nice. He doesn't go back home. He turns straight back and starts running. Chak, 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 chak. He runs in the morning. Chak, 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 chak. He's running in the hot 40 degree sun of Tirupattur. Immediately after lunch, much to the annoyance of his mother, he's still running. Chak, 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 chak. He's running late in the evening. Mother's worried about him. He can't even see the pinwheel. He's still running. Chak, 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 chak. And when the night is over, he wakes up in the morning, the cycle continues. And that is the beauty of loving your run, of enjoying your run, and not concentrating on the race or not concentrating on the finishing line. As a matter of fact, never have a finishing line. But some people draw a finish line. I say never have a finishing line. There is no finishing line. But if you're drawing a finishing line, I will tell you the dangers of having a finishing line. And um, I will tell you the dangers of having a finishing line using a story. Since I told you I love telling people stories. Now, this is not an original story. This is not an authentic story. So, listen to me carefully. This is a story of fox and the grapes. Right? Fox saw a bunch of grapes. Fox tried to go get those grapes. Could the fox get the grapes? No? What did the fox say? The grapes are sour, sour grapes. Now, that's just half the story. Today, I'm going to tell you the full story. Now, the fox was walking away. Somebody stopped him and told him, Son, where do you think you're going? He said, I tried. The grapes are sour. I'm walking out. He said, Son, you're a loser. You're making excuse. You're walking out. You think nobody saw you? There was a rabbit below. He saw you. There's a crow sitting on top of the tree. He saw you. They went around telling the whole jungle about it. You're a loser. You're making excuses. Try, try, and try until you succeed. The fox is a young fox. Gets encouraged. Gets pumped up. So every day it comes and practices jumping to that height. He spends a significant portion of his life trying to get to those bunch of grapes, trying to jump at that level. And one fine day, with the entire jungle watching, fox finally gets the grapes. A big round of applause for the fox. Let's hear it out. Ah, big news. Fox is a celebrity. Fox is on the headlines of the newspaper. Headlines, jungle news. Fox gets the grapes. Fox is on Fox News. Breaking news. Fox gets the grapes. With great aplomb, Fox proceeds to eat the grapes. And guess what? The grapes are actually sour. The grapes are really sour. Now, the fox had walked out long way back saying the grapes are sour. It invested a significant portion of its life trying to get to that level, to those bunch of grapes. The grapes are sour. Now, it can't tell everybody now grapes are sour. Everybody will laugh at him. He'll never live it down. He'll be the laughing stock 
for, for hundreds of years to come. It become a folklore. Right? So what he does, he pretends to eat and enjoy and he pretends it's sweet. Right? Just to show off to the whole people that he's having a great time. It's sweet. And then he slinks away, banishes himself out of the jungle. That, my dear friends, is the risk of concentrating only on the finishing line and only on the grapes. If the fox would have said, I love the run, I love the jump, I'm celebrating the fact that I can reach that level. These bunch of grapes are sour. Show me another bunch of grapes. Its life would have been a lot more wonderful. In conclusion, that is what I want to tell you. Never have a finishing line. Concentrate not on the race, but on the run. And this is my conclusion. Right? In a nutshell, this is what I want to tell you. Add on to those colors. Put it all on a stick. Hoist it up. Let the whole world see who you are or what you are. And run. And when you run, you see this beautiful kaleidoscope of colors. Your life will be a beautiful kaleidoscope of colors. And you'll have music in your life that goes chak 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 chak. Thank you.